Hello and welcome to this episode of Conversations in Ideas. Today we are going to cover a range of issues around the ongoing border conflicts, uh, violence between Oromia regional states and the Somali regional state. But before I go further, I want to apologize uh, for the delay. Uh, we are about an hour late and I really uh, apologize uh, for this. We had a technical problem which we didn't foresee, uh, but I think uh, that is solved now. Uh, I also have another item of apology. Um, in our advert uh, for this particular episode, we referred to the Somali regional state as simply uh, the Ogadeni region. Uh, the Somali regional state is inhabited by other ethnic groups, not just Ogadenis, and the reference to the region uh, as simply Ogadeni is, uh, I think, insensitive uh, to existing clan dynamics uh, and certainly plays into a particular kind of parochial politics, and we want to apologize for that. Uh, I also just want to say that the region is inhabited by Ogadenis, who make up about 50% of the population, uh, by Isas, by Jidawak, and, and the Gari uh, clan. So that was uh, a mistake uh, on our part, and we want to apologize. Now, before I introduce my guest today, I want to say a few things by way of providing the background, just to, to set some context for uh, this conversation. The Oromo and the Somali have a long-standing interaction dating back to the beginning of the 16th century. Uh, and these two communities were the central actors in the major population movements of the, the 16th century. Uh, and, and some historians see this as uh, critical for uh, today's ethnic makeup of the Horn of Africa. And Oromia regional states and Somali regional states share a very long border, uh, stretching for more than 1,000 kilometers uh, from the Ethiopian-Kenyan border in the southeast to uh, the highlanders of Jijiga uh, in the northeast. Uh, the two communities, particularly along uh, the border, have several socioeconomic uh, cultural ties. Uh, there are common values. Uh, which were instrumental in terms of forging solidarity and cooperation uh, at the local level between uh, between the two populations. Uh, while relations between these two communities have not always been peaceful, as these communities often competed for resources such as water and grazing land, uh, in the recent years, a number of diverse interests colluded to create uh, or politicize the relations between uh, the two communities. Uh, the federal arrangement introduced uh, uh, in the country, uh, the right to self-determination, which the Constitution grants to uh, uh, what it refers to nations, nationalities, and peoples, uh, this in and of itself have added a certain dimension uh, of politicization to the relations between the two people. So when the uh, um, the administrative boundaries uh, were demarcated early in 1992 and 93. Uh, this is the time when um, the Oromo Liberation Front and the Ogaday Liberation Front were present, uh, the dispute started uh, as far back at that moment. So the gravity of the uh, conflict between the two regions uh, is such that both regions at the moment have uh, institutions, bureaus that are responsible uh, for border affairs. Uh, in 2004, the two regions organized a referendum uh, and aimed at settling the disputes uh, over um, these areas. Uh, nearly 15 years later, uh, just uh, this year in April, uh, the presidents of the two regions, uh, Lama Magersa of Romia Regional State and Abdi uh, Muhammad Omar, popularly known as Abdi Ile, uh, signed an argument uh, to uh, court take administrative decision for the 147 cavaliers found on the border between the two uh, states. So the dispute was around over um, 400 uh, cavaliers uh, along the border, uh, recently of uh, the Oromo and the Christian Kingdom of Ethiopia, 13 year of the year to Now, Professor Mohammed, if I could start off with you, um, as I said in my introduction, uh, the, the relationship between the two communities uh, dates back uh, centuries. Uh, there has been um, conflicts of certain sorts at different times, mainly over uh, vital resources. Uh, but the current uh, conflict have an entirely different kind of dynamic. The problem, we have to concentrate on the major engine. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia is a country which is ruled by a special type of regime for the last 26 years. No African country, people uh, in the parliament, dominates the state, the army, the security, and the economy. How is possible that? 
never in any democratic system or any type of system such kind of a regime will have existed. The issue is very simple. It was designed in a, such a way by creating mercenary organization for themselves. One of their mercenary organization is the OPDO. It is not a sovereign organization of the Oromo people. The OPDO is uh, created, fed, and brought in order to delegitimize the legitimate Oromo organizations and dominate the Oromos on behalf of the TPLF. The same, the Amara organization, which now became Amara organization, to change their names, and they became an Amhara mercenary organization to control and, su and mm -hmm. subjugate the Amharas for the TPLF. So can you imagine, TPLF is in 550 parliamentarians in the parliament, so-called parliament, the hand-raising parliament of the TPLF. They have only 38, 38 seats and they dominate all the states. So we have, this is the reason of all the problem of the country. So now we are talking of the symptoms there and the symptoms over there. When we come to the Somali area, for the last, uh, uh, until Abdi Ile was brought, 38 Somali administration, they were, uh, uh, they were destroyed, and big part of them, they were jailed, and they are now languishing in Zouai and in different Ethiopian prisons. So finally, they discovered this, and of course, we will talk in details how the Liu police came and to the, the Ethiopians and all the different uh, people of Ethiopia, they should know. Uh, mm. From my understanding, even in the past, that there were some contradictions or not contradictions, always there is a contradiction, but these contradictions are not necessarily antagonistic. There was a contradiction between the Gari and Borana. But who was inciting it? Huh? Who was inciting it? To give you one example, when you go to Negele Borana, there is an area that is in the center of Negele Borana. It is called Yamarehank era. When, when the military took over power in Somalia in 1969, in 1970, as you know, in that part, it is called the land Liban. There is two Somali clans live there, the Gari and the Merehan. This Merehan pastoralist who came to the city, they brought their goat and so on, sold their goats there, and they were waiting to go back and drinking tea in the, in the afternoon. Suddenly, a paratroop came with uh, Land Rovers, uh, black Land Rovers without any number, and they just shot this pastoralist and they killed 73 Merehans. The people of Nigale, they call it Yamerehank era in Amharic. Why they do that? In order to incite a conflict between Oromos and Somalis. That was a constant Ethiopian policy since the 1950s. Now, of course, it is, it is because of the Oromo uprise and the Oromo people have refused. They, want, they don't want to leave as before. And the regime cannot rule them as before. Two dialectically, diametrically, in contradiction appear. So now you need to have to send the contradiction, use the previous contradiction, and, and divert the Oromo people uprise by creating this, contradiction. But uh, not, not in a, I would agree, I, I wouldn't qualify it, but I would also say that there are different angles. Yes, the, you know, uh, the, the thing that was mentioned and which I agree with is that um, there's this uh, regime the failure of the state to uh, be unable to moderate and mediate uh, inter-ethnic and local conflicts. Mm. Um, so I do agree uh, in that respect. However, what what I would add to it, it it's not something that wasn't said, uh, but what I would add to it is that these communities, these uh, traditional communities uh, predate the Ethiopian state. Um, and, and they exist and have existed and will exist irrespective of the Ethiopian state. Um, and so what happened in the last uh, 20 years, and, and this is something that you can trace to the 1950s, uh, they, they are 
being politicized. They are being uh, taken up by the respective regional administrative systems, which which turns them from conflicts between you know nomadic and uh, uh, and farming communities into a conflict between two states. And when when this is happening at the same time, you'd see and um, there have been instances where the security forces of one group and the other clashing with each other. And and so uh, the conflict is becoming more intense, more systematized, and with the part